Welcome to Kay Passionate. I'm your host, KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with marine mammals. Previously, we took deeper dives into the marine mammal senses of sight and touch. This week, however, we're taking a deeper dive into a sense that has baffled the scientific community for years. Taste. Here's your obligatory reminder to smash that subscribe button and head down to the descriptions below if you'd like to see ways that you can help support the channel. Personally, I love food, and most people do. That's the reason why cooking shows are so enjoyable. Because we've just added the breadcrumbs and what else? Um, oh, it's all like steamy. Yeah, oh, there it goes. There uh, I added the cayenne pepper, a bunch of sage, and a little bit of oregano. Mm, okay. And when we think of what's for dinner, we're typically thinking of what we want to taste. Whether we want something sweet, like ice cream. Can I be holding an ice cream cone? or savory, like spaghetti. This is a plate of spaghetti. It's steamy. <laughs> I don't know if I can make steam. <laughs> but the primary purpose of taste is actually a preliminary evaluation of the food. If the food is safe to eat, it's likely delicious. How's that, pretty tasty? Can I have one? Can I, can I, can I have one? Please. If it's spoiled or unsafe, we usually get the immediate urge to spit it out. <laughs> Taste itself is actually a chemical reaction that occurs when something that is food touches one of our taste buds. This reaction produces a combination of five different kinds of taste. Sweetness, sourness, saltiness, bitterness, and savoriness, also known as umami. But the one that is of particular interest to health researchers and those who study evolution is bitterness. And the reason that bitterness is particularly important for evolution is that things that are toxic are often also bitter. So, an animal that is more sensitive to the taste of bitter or toxic compounds is more likely to survive than an animal that is less sensitive to it. And this is partially why I said earlier that the scientific community is baffled by the sense of taste. Because you see, marine mammals like whales and dolphins don't have taste buds. Recently, researchers screened the genomes of 15 different whale and dolphin species and found almost a complete loss of taste receptors. And the few taste genes that they did find were irreparably damaged by mutations, making them essentially useless. And in a moment, I'm gonna talk about why this has scientists so baffled. But for right now, I'm gonna talk about why it actually makes sense. Flavors are typically released by the act of chewing. And animals like whales, dolphins, and even sea lions don't chew their food. They swallow their food whole. Watch this male stellar sea lion eat an entire Chinook salmon without chewing. Hey, where are you? I <laughs> Oh my god! You gotta be kidding me! You... In fact, sea lions have also lost most of their taste receptors. If you look at the teeth of animals like dolphins or sea lions, you'll notice that they're all conical in shape, meaning that they're used for gripping and grabbing, not so much for chewing. In fact, there are very few marine mammals who chew their food. One of those is the sea otter. Full disclosure though, unlike whales and dolphins, there's actually not a lot of research into sea otters' taste buds. There is, however, some circumstantial evidence that seems to point to a heightened sense of taste in sea otters. But before we talk about that, I wanna just talk about my personal observations from a decade working with sea otters. 
Found the jello! <laughs> Sea otters tend to have highly specialized diets. In the wild, it's not at all uncommon to find sea otters specializing in just one particular prey item. Could be a sea urchin or maybe a particular type of clam. Under human care, sea otters typically have access to a wide variety of food. However, most of the otters that I've worked with definitely seem to show preferences for certain types. Take Rialto for example. He is a terribly picky eater. In fact, one of the pickiest eaters that I have worked with. Oh. Rialto, I'll give you something different. Sorry, is that gross? Another extremely picky eater was Wally. Wally was an adult male sea otter who was rescued after being injured by gunshot wounds that had blinded him. He had lived most of his life in the wild when he was rescued and deemed non-releasable. And if you're curious about the criteria and who deems an animal releasable or non-releasable, you can check out one of our old deeper dives right up here. And as I said earlier, sea otters have extremely specialized diets. When Wally was first rescued, he was so picky that he would only eat a certain type of clam called a gooey duck, which is a large surf clam that is widely considered a delicacy. A single gooey duck can sell for hundreds of dollars. Hopefully we don't get deleted off of YouTube for showing you what a gooey duck looks like. So the rescue center was spending thousands and thousands of dollars buying gooey duck for Wally from special Asian markets just to keep him alive. Joey, on the other hand, loves everything. Doesn't matter if it's a clam, a squid, a prawn, only the quantity matters to him, and he wants lots. Dude, finish up your pocket snacks. Another interesting observation of mine that seems to indicate a stronger sense of taste in sea otters is their vocalizations. Several of them, like Quatsi or Mac, tend to make contented coos while eating. <coughs> So what about the scientific evidence that I mentioned? It actually comes from a group of sea otters centered around the Gulf of Alaska. Two researchers from the University of Washington found that sea otter habitats and ranges were strongly influenced by things like red tide. When algae bloom, they produce a lethal toxin known as demoic acid. Exposure to this compound damages the brain. It can cause things like confusion, memory loss, seizures, and even death. However, sea otters apparently can detect whether or not fish or clams are contaminated with the paralyzing toxin. And this is why sea otters don't live in the southeast inside passage, which is frequented by red tides. And while researchers don't 100% know what leads sea otters to be able to detect red tides, the leading hypothesis is taste. Sadly, the opposite is also true, and animals like dolphins and sea lions' inability to detect something like bitterness leaves them especially vulnerable to red tide. Hundreds, if not thousands, of sea lions fall victim to demoic acid poisoning every year. And the same is true of whales and dolphins. But it is particularly alarming to note an increased frequency in these cases along the west coast. Scientists are yet uncertain what is causing the increase in frequency of these red algae blooms, but you can find links to the sources that we used down in the descriptions below. Most of them think that climate change is likely to blame. The stronger and more intense storms caused by climate change increase the runoff from the rivers, which provide a large amount of nutrients to growing algae. The same is true for melting glaciers. 
and rising ocean temperatures have also been implicated in the increased rate of algae blooms. There is good news though, there's actually a lot that we can do to fight climate change. But the cutest method is to send in the sea otters. Previously, we did a video on how scientists believe that restoring sea otters to their natural habitats will decrease the amount of carbon in the air. In case you missed it or you're wondering how in the world that could be, stay tuned and at the end of this video, the suggested video for you will be that video. I said video a lot in that sentence. It was awkward. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you next time as we continue our journey through marine mammal senses and take a deeper dive into the sense of smell. Cheers. Now previously, we took deeper dives into the marine mammal senses of touch and smell. Did we do smell? Yep, that's right. Darn, we're going to, we're gonna get there. Here's your obligatory reminder to smash that subscribe button. How hard do they have to smash the subscribe button? I mean, like, just hit it really hard.